Hello and welcome. The World Health Organization's report on the quality of air features 14 Indian cities on top of its list as the most polluted. Now, Kanpur, a North Indian city, leads the pack of polluted Indian cities. And there are 13 Indian cities that follow Kanpur. Faridabad, Varanasi, Gaya, Patna, Delhi, Lucknow, Agra, Muzaffarpur, Srinagar, Gurgaon, Jaipur, Patiala and Jodhpur. Now, neighboring China, on the other hand, has shown signs of improvement. Beijing has bolstered its anti-pollution measures in 2013. As many as 16 Chinese cities were among the global top 20 most polluted cities in the world. And now there are only four. Now, even though China still features on the most polluted cities, it has managed to make uh, significant improvements. A lesson India could surely learn. In fact, it's not just China that India can take lessons from. There are several cities across the world which have sustained their place on the world's cleanest cities list. Let's take a look at which cities are famous for being the cleanest and what works in their favor. The city of Calgary in Canada has a population of over 1 million, but it is one of the cleanest cities in the entire world. Despite being in a booming oil and gas region, the city has strategically planned measures to help reduce traffic congestion and other factors that contribute to air pollution. By maintaining a grid-like structure and using an effective light rail scheme, the city reduces congestion and emissions. The city also has pioneered garbage transfer stations that sort through the waste and remove all biodegradable and recyclable materials, helping to reduce the need for landfill. All right, next on the list is Honolulu in Hawaii in the United States. The city has a light manufacturing industry, with tourism being one of its largest industries. Dedicated bus lanes in their transit system promotes bus travel, which in turn reduces exhaust fumes and keeps the air clean. Now, Helsinki is one of the many Nordic cities to make it to the list of the cleanest cities in the world. The residents of the city are very committed to preserving the environment and prevent littering. Wider streets across the city make them less prone to congestion and the light rail commuter system is most widely used, reducing emissions. One of the reasons why Oslo is considered to be one of the cleanest cities in the world is because city developers have used creativity to find unusual ways to go green. One of the most effective is that the city features buses that run on, on fuels taken from human waste. It's hoped that this initiative will ultimately provide enough energy for the entire city fleet. Now, Brisbane in Australia has a population of 2.3 million but is spotlessly clean. There's also an abundance of recreational spaces, parks and botanical gardens which make the city pollution free and the air clean. Even though it is home to several industries, all of them are environmentally friendly. The capital of Sweden, Stockholm, was awarded the title of cleanest capital in Europe by the European Union in 2010. What works in its favor is that there are very few heavy industries which help keep emission in check. The city also has the largest percentage of clean vehicles in Europe. Now in Asia, the Japanese city of Kobe features on this list. The town is highly populated and is a major tourist attraction. But despite a large population of 1.5 million, there is no public littering. The city is famous for its advanced sewage management, installations and vehicles that are friendly to the environment. Now Kobe has Japan's most effective waste disposal systems and it recycles most of the waste it generates. Right, so that was the list of countries among the most cleanest in the world and we'll get you more going forward, especially we'll be hearing from the Norwegian ambassador to India to know more about how Norway has succeeded in combating pollution. All that and more coming up in just a bit. But to bring our viewers up to speed with the latest news we are tracking here on Beyond, India's northern city of Kanpur has been rated as the world's most polluted city. There are 14 Indian cities in the list including capital New Delhi. All right, joining me live from New Delhi is Niels Ragnar Kamswak, Norway's ambassador to India. Good evening, ambassador. Thank you for joining us on Vion. 
Now, Oslo has time and again uh, featured on the world cleanest cities list. How does the city manage to do that? How does uh, the government work towards achieving that? Well, I think uh, a key reason for this is that this has been a topic which has been high on the Norwegian agenda for many, many years. Actually, uh, the, the term sustainable development, I think, was coined the first time in the so-called Brundtland report to the UN, which was uh, a commission uh, set, uh, established by the UN to look at the sustainable development and chaired by the then Norwegian uh, Prime Minister Gro Harlem Brundtland, and, and I think that also reflected of a very high focus on it from those days. And the government and also the city authorities in in Oslo have constantly tried to to reduce pollution, to make the uh, city more environmentally friendly, and that has has uh, created good results. I can, as a small example, I can mention that we have a a river, small river going through Oslo, which for the first time in 200 years, we can now fish salmon in. Also, Ambassador Kamswak, air pollution levels in Norway have been relatively stable over the last decade or more. Now, what measures do you think have worked to achieve that? Well, there have been a, a, a number of, of uh, measures. I think first you have had a very strong European regulation of industries and of, of traffic also going back 30, 40 years so that emissions from, from uh, industry has been dramatically reduced. We have also got more environmentally friendly cars. I mean, I should mention that Norway has by far the highest share of, of uh, electrical vehicles in the world. And that, of course, also contributes to, to, to this, but we have at the same time, there has been a very big focus on, on collective transport, meaning that we want to reduce the number of cars in the cities. We have reduced the number of parking spaces also in the cities. But uh, combine that with, with uh, making uh, 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 public transport more affordable, but also m much more available. So that has been very important uh, parts of this uh, policy. In, in addition, there is a focus now on, uh, on having areas where you have no cars, uh, save for pedestrians and, and for bicyclists. And all this to be, uh, together makes it a much cleaner city and a much more livable city. Now, Ambassador, the city of Bergen is now looking at stringent measures to combat air pollution. Now, we are given to understand that there is a 500% toll that could be levied can you tell us more about the measures the government is planning to make in this regard? Yeah, well, these are uh, this is just not permanent measures, but they are they are time restricted measures. It should be said that in Norway, if if the pollution level reaches 50 p.m. 2.5 then you are, we are into what we call red zone, and that's when uh, the cities can enforce uh, particular measures. And, and in Bergen, that includes, for instance, that uh, uh, the levy, which is levied on cars coming into the city, can go up to 500% up in short periods. Uh, and they also enforce a number of other measures if, if this is happening. But that is combined with long-term measures, both in Bergen and in Oslo, to get the overall uh, pollution levels down. And uh, I saw now the other day that uh, Bergen has actually now has the, the lowest uh, pollution levels in, in eight years, which shows that the measures they have taken have worked. And I still think for, by Indian standards, 50 p.m. Uh, 2.5, which is red zone in Norway, is still pretty low. Indeed, Ambassador. Now, we've spoken about air pollution. I want to talk a bit about water pollution. Now, Norway is fighting its own battle with water pollution. Environmental pollutants were found in large Norwegian lakes. How is your government going to tackle that problem? Well, I think the, what is referred to here is actually uh, fairly small uh, um, pollutants in, in some of the lakes, but we have had 
Uh, we have had earlier on, we have had problems with, with our lakes, partly because of air transported uh, pollutants from other countries and partly from emissions from agriculture and, and, and so forth. And that has meant that we have, when it comes to pollutants from air, air, uh, air pollution from other countries that have been tackled through international agreements, which actually no are, are uh, working. When it comes to other emissions, uh, our authorities are measuring uh, air uh, or uh, water qualities in the key lakes constantly. And if, the, if uh, any kind of limits of what is permissible in the, in, in the, in the water are detected, uh, you, we implement immediately stringent measures, first to try to, to identify the sources eventually of the pollutions. And, and secondly, to, um, to, to then to enforce uh, uh, arrangement which will uh, remove this problem. Right. In conclusion, Ambassador Kamswag, Delhi has managed to overtake Beijing when it comes to pollution levels and measures taken by the state here don't seem to be working. Now, what would your suggestion be to tackle this, this menace? Well, actually, I lived in Beijing 20 years ago when the air pollution in Beijing, I think, was worse than it is in, in Delhi now. And I think one of the things, as far as I can see, when I've studied a bit on what, what uh, they have done right there, and which I think also is useful both in Delhi, but what, what we have seen and worked many other places, is actually to establish clear goals for, for unrealistic goals for re reductions and, and really... Uh, uh, to try to enforce these goals. We have seen that has been succeeding in, in, in Beijing, but it's also basically what we have seen have been succeeding in, in, in Oslo and in Bergen and, and so forth. So I, so I think first and foremost to establish an ambitious plan for how we are going to, to reduce this and establish goalposts where you can measure whether you, you are progressing in the right direction. All right, on that note, Ambassador, thank you so much for speaking to me. I appreciate it. That was Ambassador Nils Ragnar Kamsbach of Norway speaking to Beyond.